Folks, E.T. here coming at you with the next part of our new crash course, with, crash course, which is our dark pools area. Now, this is our market dashboard. All right, dark pool area. So this is an overall look at dark pools instead of individual tickers, but we can still kind of drill down on individual tickers here. Now, what we're looking at here is our highest dark pool, our largest dark pool trades, and what dark pool had the highest dark pool in, or what area or sector had the highest dark pool inflow. Very good to look at there. All right, so as we're looking along here, remember I talked about filters a little bit earlier on, and this is where we start to kind of see where that's important. I do want to point out that you can click on anything when you see the, when you see the label here, see the icon for, when you see the icon for a ticker, you can click on it here and you can click NetFlow. You, you can look for news. You can see things that happen. So it's this net Tesla NetFlow is very, very, very uh, strong to the put side. On Friday, we went down, but there was some news after hours. And so you can click here for news as well. You can also check the insiders to see if there's been any, any buying or selling going on. Just a quick thing there. So now this is the spot where we can kind of start to look into our filters and see what's looking around. So we did see, all right, that we did see financial financial sector had the highest dark pool inflow, which is quite a bit. And so we can start to see here what we're looking for is different, different sizes of dark pools. We're looking for larger ones always. I look for larger ones or a bunch of small ones sitting at certain levels. I always like to say 10% just to see what if that changes anything. But here's what's important, and I wanna talk about this, and this is very, very, very important here. Dark pools can be somewhat uh, mystical to people, and they think different things about them, and they see a green or a red symbol on a dark pool and think that it's bull or bear. I wanna really point out the importance that what we're looking for in dark pools is just the level. Think of them as support and resistance, okay? So there's a $32 million dark pool print here at 41.57 on XLF. Instead of thinking and trying to find out, gosh, is that bull or is that bear? What you really wanna do is just mark this big level on your chart and see what happens with price around it. It's very, very, very simple. It's just think of it as a support or resistance level depending on where price is. You can see here 41.57, even more getting hit there on XLF. So that's very interesting to see. 41.57 becomes a very integral point of contention for XLF there. I think we have some bank earnings coming up this week. So that could be one thing that we're looking at. All right, C also saw a bunch at 61.6 so that could very well be the same thing you get multiple pages to look at as we go along as well block trade sort of the same thing you're looking for price all right you're looking for what the price is it's already picked up my financial sector for me here so what you want to do is look for what the price is how large it was and then mark that level on your chart especially if you see uh, big repeat areas as you go along. It's not that difficult. Nothing mystical about it. There's nothing difficult. You don't need to, to, to go into a big brain scenario of was it a buy, was it a sell? Uh, did, did it say green or red on, on anything? What you really want to just look for is repeat hits at levels and mark those levels below and they are resistance, above they are support. Then jumping into our largest dark pool trades, pretty simple, big circles that show where our large dark pool trades are. You don't really want to, I'll repeat it again, green or red, you don't necessarily want to, to look too deep into that because buys and sells can be a little different. If there's a seller, there's a buyer, there's a buyer, there's a seller, vice versa. What you do want to see is size as you go along and that's important. This is your overall look here of all the different things that had Dark, large dark pool prints, the bigger the circle, right? The bigger the print. So plain and simple there. Sector dark pool amount. This is just increasing or decreasing amount going into the dark pool. So pretty simple here. Large amounts going into financial. We already saw that. Pretty interesting, right? And then sector net amount, we saw same thing over here. Just gives you a widget with green and red bars. Everything to the left of zero, right, is is uh, less dark pools, everything to the right of zero, big buys, all right, as we go along there. So it's outflow versus inflow as we go along. So that's very, very, very simple. Nothing too big to go there. 
dark pool ticker dashboard. This is just an overall amount. All right, you can, you can pull the CSV to see where all these prints are so you can search and you're really just looking for the same thing, large prints at certain areas. I don't want you to get too confused and just and, and get too in depth here with this. You can if you want, obviously that is, that is, that is your thing if you would like to, but dark pools, most of us just use them as support and resistance. We add the levels and it's very important to us to see how price price goes there. If you look at our spy chart every day on Twitter, there are constantly we see we see uh, bounces and rejections at large spy dark pool levels. They work the same for the other tickers as well. All right, that is all for now when it comes to this page. Everybody stay safe out there.